go. Yay! Happy Friday, everybody. So this is uh, Robert Knowles, a.k.a. Silas Knowles, a.k.a. Everything in Between, talking with Rebecca Coda today, one of our co-founders of, the, of uh, pushboundconsulting.com. So this is our wonderful logo. You can find us at pushboundconsulting.com. We are pushing boundaries. But, uh, what we can do is push the boundaries of everyone's classroom. And I want to just make sure we talk about administrators, teachers. If you guys need any help with reintegration, professional development, things like that, we are your one-stop shop. Just to give you an idea, we have a whole team, definitely of all different types of educators, all different types of administrators, we have what you need. So if you need help with reintegration, please reach out to us. We'll definitely, definitely be able to help you in whatever needs you have with reintegration for the fall, any type of professional development. We have one of our main co-founders and contributors, Rebecca Coda, go into her chapter. Actually, I made a misprint, Rebecca. I'm sorry. It's chapter 10, not 11. So we, I jumped on the number because you know, I, there was a mix up and Rick thought it was Julie. I don't know. It's just some, some weird thing. But we're talking about recovery mode. Definitely pushboundconsulting.com. This is a free 158 page ebook, not just for educators, not just for administrators, for parents, anyone who has kids in school, whatever the case may be. This is what everyone's talking about. And with education and school ramping up very quickly in the next four weeks about people going back. Everyone wants it. Please like, share, download this book, share it to a friend. Everyone wants to get a hold of this book to know, like, we don't have all the answers, but we definitely have the questions to start the game. So, Rebecca, how are you today on this lovely Friday? We were just talking Louisiana is kind of hot today. It is. In fact, uh, I guess what I have is alpaca hair. They say, <laughs> they say anybody that has uh, curly hair at all in this humidity, it just like, Frizzes out to alpaca, so I'm. Just I heard. Gonna, I heard um, it's. I heard it's poofy. It's the poofy hair syndrome. I. I have short hair, so I don't know the poofy. The poofiness is going on. So definitely, ladies and gentlemen, when we start discussing, please we encourage you like, share what you see, and ask any questions. Ask any come push any comments through. We will field any questions, any comments you might have. So when we're talking about Rebecca's chapter. The title of it is Instructional Practices That Bridge Academic Disruption. Rebecca, I'll give it to you. Let's break it down. What does that mean to everybody? Um, you know, this really starts a new section in the book. Um, part one really talked about the healing of people. That's where we're at. That's what so many people need. You know, section two really looks at emerging bigger and better and brighter, especially through student voice. And so now just really launching this, this last section, it really is about capitalizing on the instructional practices that we know work. So I, I think one thing that the, the pandemic taught us was what are those things that we are just doing a really good job of as educators? And then likewise, what emerged were what are those things that we really need to evolve? We need to emerge. We need to uh, dial forward. But one of those things that we don't want to lose are those instructional practices, especially when they're evidence-based and research-based. And, and I know we all know them, but we, we don't want to get um, so wrapped up in this technology-driven um, movement because we have to, to the event that we lose those instructional practices. So we've got to really still stay anchored to that um, and that's really the essence of this chapter, um, really talking about those instructional practices. Excellent. Excellent. Now, when we're talking about practices and stuff, your first one I love, and I'd love for you to break down a little bit, to embrace the mindset of an expert teacher with high expectations. So I'm a teacher. I go into my classroom. If I embrace this practice, what does that look like? Um, you know what, Amanda May actually just um, released a book on that, on the expert teacher, and she really was looking at those superstar teachers, like your teachers of the year at the state level, your Disney teachers of the year, your Blue Ribbon schools. What do all of those people have in common? And a lot of it is culture. A lot of it is dialing into student voices, that it factor of we're so strategic, so well prepared, but yet... Um, they have the it factor, that art and science of teaching, that they're able also to intuitively connect 
um, to be of high interest, high value to students and really seeing them as, as the client, as the, that mark to hit. So it is a matter of, um, you know, having those strong TLCs and being very well planned, knowing your curriculum, knowing your standards, but it's also that it factor of we're always learning. Like we've never reached that it factor because every year our kids change. So it's not like we can hit our mark in corporate America and, you know, and now I'm deemed expert. Okay, I'm good unless I want to apply for a different position, (laughs) education is completely different because our clients are different every year and what they need and the composition of who they are and their backgrounds and life experiences and knowledge. Um, So, uh, you know, we could do a whole all day PD on that, but really in a nutshell, you know, that, that's really the mindset of an expert teacher is that they're always seeking excellence, always seeking um, and striving for an upward mark. The one thing, the one thing, my first real contract job, I shared this, I think, with Justin Ashley is, is that I sat down for my evaluation and I just, 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 I said, hey, let me, can I ask you a question to my evaluator? And he was very laid back. And he's just like, sure, go ahead. I said, has anyone sat in this chair and actually like, just said, whatever, like, just give me a high, just give me proficient. And that's it. He's like, yeah, all the time, 20, 30 year teachers are sitting there. It's like, yeah, give me proficient. I I don't have, I don't need to learn anymore. And I'm thinking to myself that you can't do that. I mean, I'm only eight years in the game and I'm still learning. And when I get to 20 and 25 years in the game, I mean, I, I see your bookshelf, my bookshelf's off to the side. That's the reason why I think we have so many education books because there's so many different questions and no one has the right answer. We just have a good sense. And next year, uh, Pushbound Consulting, Dave Burgess, uh, Teach Better, everyone out there are gonna have another 50 books for us to plow through just to see what the new thing is and the next thing is and to try and get that content and strive to be experts in everything that we do. Because I think this is gonna be around for another, I mean, I went to my doctor the other day, at least another two years they're saying that we're gonna be dealing with possibly masks and this this type of situation we're dealing in education. So yeah. I just, I don't know. I mean, they say lay off the caffeine. So I'm trying this new, let's see if I can get in the camera. This is this new, and don't don't judge me, America. This Aspire stuff. Okay, so it's no sugar and what else? Healthy energy, calorie burning, no calorie. No. If anyone can help me, I have to stay off sugar, but I need the caffeine. So comment on what I can drink because I can't drink caffeine anymore from soda. I can take black coffee, but not soda. This, this is cranberry. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's weird. I had a long talk with the doctor, so I have to does say. It, does have, it taste good? Uh, it tastes like cranberry juice, but I don't know okay. if it has the energy, the energy that a, a nice cup of coffee with gotcha. cream and sugar will. Cause I, you know, I don't know. I'm not a black coffee drinker, but I, you can only take unsweet tea for so long. Gotcha. <laughs> those are my staples so <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it's just like you got to go to it so it when, we, up. when we talk about the academic disruption and everything that we're going through right now um before and tell me if i'm mistaken as a high school teacher if i know my standards if i know what i know i can probably be placed in any classroom and deliver instruction but now is it more about your content deep, like knowing more of your content deeply to really bridge that gap? Or is it, is it has it not changed? I mean, like the essential standards and stuff. Well, I, I don't think that the standards have changed, but I do think that targeting specific standards more deeply, in other words, we're gonna do a few deep than trying to hit all of them, which right. before there was no way to ever hit all of the common core standards in a year. It's just impossible, mm-hmm. which kind of leads us to, again, that um, integration of content, um, student voice, and really um, tying those things back to being community-based, that that project-based mindset, that por- portfolio mindset. But knowing our content and knowing our standards deeply, that piece hasn't changed, but maybe the quantity of them and uh, the strategy and that, um, you know, your your PLC conversations may look different 
because you can cover even less when you're fully digital or, you know, you're going through tragic times and hybrid times, you know, it, it's less possible to cover more. So you have right. to think even more strategically, but what we don't lose is knowing them deeply. Excellent. Excellent. Now, when I look through your chapter and there's, there's a phrase that is new to me, um, what is evidence-based teaching? Like, what is that? You know, that's really interesting. That was kind of a deeper new learning for me the last several years. I had the privilege of working in Cabot Public Schools as the director of curriculum and instruction. And so when we really were starting to analyze um, new book adoptions, um, and I say book adoptions, they're all hybrid now, online resources and integrated but what we really needed to look at was, was it replicable? So it's evidence-based if there are enough studies of it and that if a teacher implements the, the curriculum, even in its most diluted, simple form, because the curriculum is so strong and the activities tied to it um, also are, that it will create the same results in another classroom in another district because it's evidence-based okay and they all tie back to those best practices you know if, if we are looking at um marzano um if we're looking at all of those research-based best practices most of those are embedded in it um but it's replicable is probably how i would probably share evidence-based the most i i in marzano we're actually changing to a marzano-based grading scale in the fall so that's that should be a fun, that should be a fun time with the, I mean, we've had all the things with the transitions, but sure. it, the transition is going, is going forward. And, you know, we got a, that learning curve. Um, so when we talk about your, your fifth practice in here on professional learning communities, PLC, um, I see something new from our buddies at First Educational Resources. Uh, first things first, Garth Larson, Tammy Larson, and uh, Greg Walcott and all the guys over there, Kilbert. Hi guys, we love you. We, we, we appreciate you. But what are PLCs 2.0? I noticed that. Um, you know, that is something that I'm not necessarily even going to tread on just okay. because I don't want to um, misrepresent them in any way. Sure. Um, yeah. So yeah. what I will do with that is just send them on over to First Educational Resources um, to kind of take a look at that. But what, what I will say is a jumping off point is that the PLC process will look somewhat different just because we're digital now having those conversations and we've got to be more strategic with our time and that data that we monitor is going to look a little bit um, different as well. So, so there's a plug for first education. I'll hop on over. Um, in fact, I think they have a digital summit coming up uh, next week too. Yes. And I think, I think our other co-founder isn't Dr. Jetter involved in that one too. He is, but yeah, I, yeah, I do yeah. know that Garth will be presenting um, on um, PLCs 2.0. So I'm going to let him have that hundred percent. Definitely. Hey, I guess if we love first educational resources, I had to put them out there and put them up front because you know, they're nearby us and we love what they do. And, I know Rick and Rick and you guys talk for them, you know, Sue speaking for them sometime as well. Yeah, Eric Francis will be um, on there as well. So he's yes. done a lot of work for them. I haven't talked to Mr. Francis for a while ever since he missed that one conference in Kane County being sick. You know, I just, we'll discuss that with him later. So, um, so as we go through and everything else, we got high expectations, integrating all the content and standards and everything else. Um, talk about what, what a strength-based approach would be going into this transition when it comes to, you know, going in back into the fall with this academic disruption that we're going to be dealing with. You know, I, I really appreciate you bringing that um, up today as a discussion point. Um, I know one of the first things a lot of districts are doing right now, they're kind of having a soft start to school because they want to assess kids right out of the gate, find out where their levels are where their gaps are. But really, when we look at a strengths-based um, approach, we're looking at what can kids already do on a continuum? What skills do they already have? Um, if we're only looking at gaps and we just plug in that gap with um, an activity or an intervention, and we don't build on what they're already good at and use that as a pathway to their next step, 
then it's still just a gap in an activity. So strength-based approach would be really identifying what are students already good at, um, what do they already know, um, and what can they do? What do they understand? So really a strength-based approach isn't a, oh, you're a year and a half behind. A strength-based approach is, you know what? You can already do this, this, and this. And so your next learning is this. And it just, it's a completely different approach or spin or attitude, I would say. Definitely for the fall, that's definitely something I want to implement in my room as well. Because we look at, you know, Lexi levels and reading levels and stuff and go, oh, well, they're at a fourth grade level or they're at a fifth grade level, but taking what they can do well and turning that into strengths to make them excel throughout sure. their educational career. I mean, definitely is something to inspire rather than to leave behind kind of thing. And sure. it's, 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 it's a great way to look at it to make sure that, you know, hey, you've done all of this. Well, I think, um, what was that? There was a video Rita Pearson did where, you know, it's like, I got, you know, I got like a, 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 a 18 or no, a two out of 20. It's like, well, isn't that an F? Well, you got two right though. I mean, you just, you're halfway there. So it's like looking at the approach of putting it more positively for the student. I think a lot of people sometimes gloss over and sometimes you gotta be like, well, you're sure. doing this right and you have to push it forward. Sure. Yep, so. It's cap capturing the good and then just setting goals for next steps, giving kids a little bit more um, ownership to know what they need to to learn and take, take a little bit of a lead in that. Definitely. So going into the fall, Miss Rebecca, how how are you preparing with your your family and your your career and your everything going into the fall? I mean, how are you taking this in stride? You know, I think I'm just like every other um, parent and educator that's out there. In fact, my sister in law was texting me the other day. She's like, "Are you going to do fully online? Are you going to do hybrid? Are you going to?" Um, just sent them to school full time. And we were having that conversation and there was a meme of a mom and it's like the mom that's like, I, I, you know, my kids are going to be fully online. They're like, and then the mom that's like, well, I'm going to send them hybrid. And the mom's like, you know, so the mom's the same in all of them. Cause it's like, you just don't know. Um, and you don't want to make the wrong decision, especially um, because what if it doesn't work three weeks, four weeks, six weeks in, and you want to change and districts are saying, no, you're locked in. Once you pick, you're there for at least a semester. Right, think right. Everybody just doesn't want to make the wrong decision. And so I think all that we can do is know your kids, your own personal kids at home, know your family, what your needs are and what you're, you're capable of doing is educators out there that have their own family and are teaching. It's, it's tough to juggle. You know that. Oh, definitely. Um, so yes. I don't know. I don't know that I'm taking it in stride. It's it's just you just can make the best decision that you can make and realize that everybody's in the same boat. And, and, we, might and we might make the wrong decision and it's okay. And that's the PC way to say it, to take it in stride. I think it's just <laughs> the, the PC way of going at it. So I see this is one of my teacher besties, uh, Miss Kepner. She's from Rockford. And I think uh, Rebecca, this is a great thing for you. Um, are there any resources or anything you would recommend when it comes to strength-based learning? She wants to share with the beautiful people of Rockford, Illinois. Yay, I think Governor Pritzker's there today. Anyway, go on, cheap plug for Rockford. You know, I I don't know that I could do, do it off the top of my head just because I um, have interacted with so many topics lately, but what I will say is I can get those to you. Um, I was just having that um, a conversation with a couple other people and with some links on Twitter. So what I could do is I could drop those into the comments. Um, looks like we're on Facebook now. So yeah. I can drop those links in uh, the comments there for you, Amy, and for, for anybody um, else. Um, probably one per a couple people that I really rely on. One is Dr. Steve Weber. He's up in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Um, I think his handle on Twitter is at Curriculum Block. I'll have to look that up too. But anyway, he's uh, phenomenal for that. Um, same thing with Bethany Hill. Um, she is phenomenal with those resources. So what I will do is I'll go back and I'll just make sure I have the right hyperlinks and I'll drop those in. Sure, we appreciate it. Yeah, Bethany, Bethany is... I. I I've heard of your first uh, your first link, but obviously Bethany, I know, is a wealth of resource of information, you know, wealth of information. So we love her to death. We always appreciate you, Bethany. 
So as well as our, our friends from Arkansas as well. Got to, you know, got to go around the, around the board. Um, well, is, that's pretty much all I have for you today, Miss Rebecca. Is there anything else you want to finish off with today? I think we covered a lot. And Yeah, what, we have. Yeah. I, I think it's just, it's always about reflection and just continual improvement. So, you know, what, what did you do really well um, before and after COVID? You know, those are the things that you keep. The things that didn't work before COVID that work now, those are also the things that, that we keep. So it, it's a lot of um, dancing. It's a lot of interactions. It's a lot of PLC. It's a lot of just reflection and it's okay. None of us are perfect. It's uncharted waters for everything. Um, but when our kids are at the heart of what we do um, and empathy is our hard work, then we know we've really hit the mark. Definitely. I mean, with all the teachers out there, please, Rebecca is going to echo this probably 10 times more than I can, is that you're not alone. We're all here for each other. And it says this is this is if you're a lone wolf. I mean, I used to be. And I, I mean, I'm so glad I have the people around me that I do to collaborate and to talk to and everything else, because during this time, you can't lone wolf it. I mean, not anymore. It's just now more than ever. We yeah. need to work together to try and get through this because it's going to be it's going to be a struggle and we're going to have some ups and downs. But, you know, you just can't let it get to you. And you have to lean on some people around you. And if you can't find anybody, you got us. We're here yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, just message us, reach out. Yeah, it messages. I we're all working you. towards the same goal. I mean, I showed you the picture. You know, there is there is enough of us. There is enough of us that we will help and we will be there for you every day, man. Because that's what we do. We try and be there for all our teachers and our students and whatever the case may be. So, Rebecca, I do thank you for your time today. Uh, definitely, and then definitely for everyone else out there listening. Oh, we got a little heart. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, let me see. So for everyone else out there, just please remember, this is what we're talking about, recovery mode. It's on pushboundconsulting.com. We do offer um, PD, professional development for all schools, all organizations. For you know, So if you're an administrator or a teacher, think that this would be something that you would like to talk about at your school, please reach out to us either through our Facebook link, Twitter, or pushboundconsulting.com. Someone will get in contact with you. You know, we, we do pretty much, we do it all kind of a buffet style service. So, you know, and this is the book, please, if you're somebody who's a parent, if you're, you know, an educator, administrator, this is the book you want to read because these will answer some of the questions. We will not have all the answers, but we want to start just asking some of the questions to help and to make sure everyone has an effective transition and, you know, going through this time frame because it's going to be, it's going to be a struggle for all of us, but, you know, we're all here together. So as for Rebecca, for me, Robert Knowles, um, what are you guys doing to push the boundaries of your classroom, either virtually or in a classroom? And just remember, we're here for our students. Rebecca, love you to death, bud. We'll see you soon. Love okay? you guys too. Thank you, guys. Thank you.